Hey guys, this is Veer Das. These are my commandments for being a porn star. I'm a comedian. I'm sorry, comedian. I was thinking of something else. I, in order to write a new two-hour show, will start like eight months in advance. Spend more time on the writing than you spend on anything else. So I will spend maybe six to eight months writing and then two to three months rehearsing and touring after that. The one thing people don't understand is that comedy is just about writing. A lot of comedians are like, man, the, the lighting sucked and the audience was... No matter how much of an asshole your audience is, there's something you can take back from that show. There are no bad audiences. I take long showers. So once I'm done writing, I'll have a shampoo bottle in my hand and I'll just take like a four hour shower, uh, which my wife thinks is creepy. It's, you know, you're also naked, which is not hopefully how you're going to perform. But for me, showers, for a lot of people roam around their house and then eventually you pop into clubs and you try material. do. If a joke is working, the audience will laugh. And in India, uh, if a joke is really, really working, 4,000 people will get offended by that joke and write blogs and tweets about it. That's when your joke is really, really good. My backstage ritual is lots of meditation preceded by drugs and alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's mostly just immoral sex. No, I'm just kidding. It is. Uh, it's chai, biscuits, if I'm really exhausted, a Red Bull. Watching the audience from backstage, seeing what their energy is like. Are they loud? Are they silent? And just before I go on stage, in that moment where they say, Veep Das, and they're all screaming your name, uh, reminding yourself to be humble and that you've got a job to do. I usually will tell my first joke and then I'll pause for an unnatural amount of time. And in that first laugh, you kind of tell how cool or groovy your audience is. And I'll always try and make sure that my first joke is like an anti-joke. So it's always something uh, disturbing or something that is, you know, taking myself on or that makes them a little uncomfortable. I like to make them uncomfortable up top. I let the audience know. If I've forgotten a, a line or if a joke has gone badly, I will address the fact that I've forgotten a line or that the joke has gone badly. Because otherwise, they just, they're thinking that shit anyway and you're trying to sneak it past them. And they know, so you might as well just be honest and fess up. Absolutely, writer's block happens to me once every two or three years and I'll get out of town. So for me, it's, you know, Ladakh, get a motorcycle, just drive around for 10 days. Uh, I surf, so I'll, I'll go to like Goa or Sri Lanka or Bali and just surf for 10 days. And that cures my, life, my writer's block. It takes time. You know, uh, in, in the first few years of your career, you're writing shit that you think people will like. And then after that, you're writing shit that you think you will like. And then eventually you start writing things that are personal and things that are scare, that scare you. And that's, so it takes, even I'm just nine and a half years into this. They say that it takes 15 years to become really, really good at stand-up comedy. Realize that the audience does more for you than you do for the audience. That's the motto of my career. That when you go out and there's 8,000 people sending you laughter, you're not doing them a favor, they're doing you a favor and they're curing your darkness and they're curing your bad day you're not curing their bad day always remember that if you like this video hit the subscribe button and subscribe to film companion they're wonderful people